I'm with Whiskey Company 4-5 Commando on a covert operation to catch a high-level target suspected of training young suicide bombers. To get to the suspect's compound, we have to travel through rough terrain in the pitch black. There is the ever-present danger of stepping on an IED. Whiskey Company's plan is to split into three patrols. The first team will set up an inner cordon to prevent anyone escaping. Team two will patrol an outer cordon to stop anyone attacking the inner cordon. And the team I'm with will gain entry and secure the compound. Night operations rely on the element of surprise. But as we approach the compound, Every dog in Afghanistan is trying to give our location away. We have our own search dog, Casper, who fortunately for us has been trained to keep quiet. Why, that is man's best friend. The other half of his family down the road are proving not to be very helpful to us. And that is one of the biggest problems out here. The guys, that all of them have, um, have guard dogs. See how well trained, though. He is. If he's doing anything, he knows he's about to do his job. Whilst we wait for the other two patrols to get into position, Casper goes in to search for explosives. Send the dog in first, just to the uh, this open area just now, in the first two little compounds. Uh, so he's going to search that. Well According to other intelligence at the moment, there's been no movement inside the compound. It's either very good because the suspect's asleep or it could be very bad because there's no one in the compound. With us, we have members of the Afghan security forces. They'll be the first to go through the door. This change in policy, Afghan dealing with Afghan, is paying dividends with the locals. The Afghan security forces make their move and we hold our breath. Then, within minutes, the startled suspects are brought out. So how many is there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six males. And how many females? Five. Five females. Five females. Okay, so 11 in total. It's not lost on me that we must appear to them like aliens from another planet. Do they actually hold any legally or illegally held weapons? Wait, does, uh, or ammunition? Have had a do that. Yeah. No, I haven't. OK, we've got a second search pair on, the, on yeah. the, another individual. Yeah. yeah. The guys from Whiskey wouldn't be here, and this the intelligence was really, really good. Um, they know that the guy that trains suicide bombers frequents this compound and lives here and sleeps here on a regular basis. The fact is, you're not going to make many friends doing this early on a Friday morning, or equivalent of our Sunday morning. However, if the guy that trains suicide bombers is here and he's captured tonight, the amount of lives that have been saved is unquantifiable. The success of the whole operation now rests on the Marines finding their man. But they also need evidence to be able to prosecute. 
The mobile phone is one of the biggest sources of information and can lead to a whole network of insurgents. He said he had one memory card. Right. Which was the one in the matchbox, yep. which I found. Then he said, uh, asked him if he had any more on the phone, and like he said, no, then I found this one. Right. Mm -hmm. Mobiles can also have a deadly use, detonating IEDs. All in one week. Information now, name of Bravo One, that is the man that has trained at least 12 to 15 suicide bombers are right now being searched. But before they can detain their man, they have to find some incriminating evidence. If this test for explosives comes up positive, then this man is in a lot of trouble. Trace of a group B, because like Semtex. So the Bravo One, the main suspect, right hand on his wrist, has proved positive for uh, explosives. So at the moment, it looks like they've got the right guy. Mm. Insurgents will go to any length to hide their explosives, even concealing them within walls. Everyone in this compound is now a major suspect. They all need to be tested and catalogued. Let's go through for you got a double tone or something? No. So, um, the main suspect's been taken through now for questioning. We're here to help the people of Afghanistan, and he is not someone helping the people of Afghanistan. We know exactly who he is, and we're out to get him. Every day, we will come looking for him and his son and his friends. If we find him, with suicide bombers, or we find him with weapons and explosives, what we will do is hand him over to the police and he'll go tried by an Afghan court with an Afghan jury and he'll go to jail for the crimes he's committed. After screening everyone for explosives, the Marines have come up with a second man who is a possible insurgent. Just saying that with the, uh, the evidence that we've got, we're going to be arresting him, we're going to be taking him back to Bastion. So, um, the main suspect, Bravo 1, proved positive for explosives. Can't be anything else other than explosives. Uh, now, a second suspect uh, has proved positive for explosives. So, that's two people now that will be arrested and uh, taken to Camp Bastion for interrogation. Mm -hmm. Tell him to open his mouth wide. To complete the evidence gathering, a DNA test is carried out on each suspect. This whole process has been gleaned from 30 years of counter-terrorism during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. So, successful operation. Hmm. There's more intel behind this just than hmm. just turning up for no reason. There was hard intelligence to suggest that this man has, you know, trained young men to blow themselves up and kill other people. Mm -hmm. And the successful operation today um, by the lads um, has you know, taken this guy out of the picture for a period of time. 
uh, and that will have two effects. A, uh, he won't be able to attack us or attack anybody else and, uh, whilst he's dealing with, uh, with these issues. And secondly, it sends a message out to the wider community uh, that ISAF will appear out of the night. Uh, they will appear on the doorstep of uh, suspected or known insurgents um, and are not afraid to do so. Uh, and I fully expect uh, other local nationals to come forward now uh, with more information because they will be slightly less scared because or slightly been... more reassured that ISAF will take action. Because he's been taken out of the pitch. <laughs> So that's the end of Tora Basha 43. Uh, for us guys, we left at uh, 21.15, it's now 09.15, so 12 hours, 15 minutes. Um, from the OC's point of view and from Whiskey's point of view, very successful operation. And um, I'd say pretty proud of the guys of Whiskey Company who uh, at all times um, performed professionally and also with the utmost courtesy towards the people they were dealing with, even the people they were arresting.